All right, good morning, C-U-T. How you doing this morning? You all good? Love you, love you, Cuddy. What's up, man? You all right? Good. Huh? I, I, I missed it, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm drawing on you. I'm trying not to get distracted. My wife says I get distracted easily. <laughs> See, you, D- D- digital ministry, we love you, bless you. We're excited that uh, we have an opportunity to grow and expand and be together on uh, such a beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful morning. God bless you for being here, uh, wherever here is for you. Give yourself a round of applause. Not, not everyone is willing to say yes to their new opportunity, right? Some people decided that uh, on today they would not do what was best to position them to be able to grow and take the next step in their own soul's evolution. And you decided for you that you would get what you needed, wherever you needed to get it at. So God bless you. I'm excited for you. Um, and I'm excited for this opportunity for us to... Um, to dig back into the soul of CUT and for us to uh, reconnect ourselves to the purpose and mission uh, for which God established this ministry. Uh, How many of you know that God by divine design made each and every one of us uh, unique? You know that? Yes. And so each and every one of us is a unique and unbeatable and unrepeatable expression of God. I believe that God also sees fit to establish ministries in that same mode, right? Whether it's a, whether it's a church or, or a mosque or a temple, a no two ministries have the same mission or purpose and given to the same community within the same context, Because God knows that he created all kinds of different people, and so all kinds of different people would need a different opportunity to plug into what spoke to their soul, yes? And so as we are uh, revisiting the purpose and mission of Christ Universal Temple, I would love to give you a pop quiz and ask you what the purpose was. So let me just give you the answer. So our purpose is to teach the universal spiritual principles as taught and demonstrated by Jesus Christ. Yes? And we have a five-fold method or purpose through which we uh, express that purpose. Now, I am going to quiz you on these. So in in no in particular order. So the purpose, the five-fold purpose of this ministry is teaching and preaching. Uh, Very good. Teaching and preaching. Prayer. I heard prayer. Healing, I heard healing. Service, very good. And fellowship, that's excellent. Only one of you all got the last one, though. I really heard one person say fellowship. Teaching and preaching, prayer, healing, service, and fellowship. That's the five-fold purpose through which our purpose expresses through this ministry. And our mission is to teach all who are willing to learn how to live a better life through the renewing of their mind. Is that right? At the start of this series, I ask you to do two things. I ask you to bathe this ministry and this series in prayer. Yes? And I ask you to uh, make a commitment to be with us and to be with me as we face the facts and hold the truth, right? And so today I want us to just be reminded of the commitment that we made. Let me hear you make some noise if you say yes to that commitment. Love it. All right. And so then I just want us to just have an opportunity to to start on the common ground. It helps to to have a, a, a common foundation upon which to build on, yes? So then when we begin to look at uh, where it is we're going, when we begin to look at where it is we're going, we have a vision statement for this ministry. The vision statement of this ministry is to build the individual, to rebuild the institution, and to expand the reach of our better living message. That's the vision statement. That's the living, active, working vision statement of the ministry. 
Now, when it comes to the vision of a ministry, just like when it comes to your vision for your life, every now and again, you have to tweak your vision because once you accomplish what it is you set out to accomplish, a satisfied need no longer motivates. And so in ministry, just as in your life, you have to be willing to reshape your vision so that you continue to have something to stretch toward the mark of. Does that make sense? And so the vision that has been uh, put before us, but maybe not necessarily unpacked, is a threefold vision to build the individual, to rebuild the institution, and to expand the reach of our better living message. When we think about building the individual, Raymond Hollowell wrote that nature is a prolific producer of blessings. He said it's ever producing all things for the good and useful purpose. He then went on to say that every individual, therefore, has a natural right. Someone want to say it's a natural right? right. Has a natural right to a full supply of every good thing they can use or enjoy. Part of helping you to be built out as an individual is to help you be in alignment with the prolific blessings that are all around us. And to help us know how to be in sync and to use the principle and to apply what we have been learning so that we can put ourselves in the flow of what God is already doing. Can I share something with you? God is not intending to do a new thing in order to bless you. The blessings that you desire are all about you right here and right now. God does not have to do something miraculous to create the experience. All we have to do is get in alignment with what is. And when we get in alignment with what is, it simply flows. I imagine very few of us stand at our sink and pray for water. Unless, of course, you ain't handled that business with the water company. But if all things are equal and all things are in order, when we go to the sink, we don't pray. We simply turn. That's right. And when we turn the faucet to be in alignment with the flow that is already present, what happens? The good just flows. And so then what we intend to do in terms of building you out as an individual or building your ability to think or building your ability to feel or building your ability to speak in right ways or building your ability to act and react in ways that are consistent with what you have been praying for, it's intended to help you move into the life you deserve and desire. Are you with me? <clears throat> A couple weeks ago, I shared some things that I am responsible for as the spiritual leader and principal teacher in this ministry. Some of those things, just to give you a quick recap, is to make sure that we relate former lessons to current lessons. You'll always hear me refer back to the truth that you know in class. Now, if you've never been in class, when you hear me say it up here, it's going to be strange to you. But if you've been in class, you'll be like, I heard that in class. Or when you get here, you'll, you'll say, when you hear something in class, you'll say, oh, I heard, yeah, I heard, that in, I heard that on Sundays. Are you with me? Part of my responsibility to you is to provide you some steps by which you can easily assimilate and put into execution the lessons that are being taught to you. Yes? Part of my responsibility is to illuminate the lesson in the form of illustrations. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a little bit. And then part of my responsibility to you is to guide you so that you can transfer your learning into action. Nothing changes by, uh, nothing improves by chance, it only improves by change. See, you, you cannot drift your way up a mountain. You have to put the work in to climb. Are you with me? I have a responsibility as the principal teacher, you have a responsibility as the principal student. Yes? As the principal learner, your responsibility is to think the truth, the principles, the points, the content into an area of understanding. As Emmett Fox says, and as my brother often likes to quote, there is no such thing as undemonstrated understanding. If it's not showing up in your life yet, it's because you don't have the understanding for it. 
And for many of us, the gap between the information and the understanding is just committing ourselves to understanding it. Phyllis on yesterday gave a wonderful uh, uh, usher. She gave a wonderful testimony yesterday, and she just laid out some points by which we can begin to uh, build our understanding, but you have to work it. See, it's, it's, it's not enough to just be a hearer of the word. And it doesn't matter how long you sit or come here. Right? It's not just, it's not just about being in the proximity where the blessing is. If you guys remember the guy by the pool, he's there by the pool 38 years. Healing is happening all around him. So it's not just enough to be close to the place where healing is happening. You have to do the work that is required to either get yourself up in the pool or get your understanding up to the place where you don't have to be in the pool and you can still be blessed. But one way or the other, you have to get up. Are you with me? So you've got to work it into understanding. If you understand it, it has to manifest. Repeat after me. If I understand it, it has to manifest. That is the law. And it's your responsibility to work it for you, to work it. It doesn't matter how much I love you. As your spiritual leader, I can't do your work for you. Not any, not any more than I can lay right here and do push-ups and you, and you get bigger. <laughs> it, it, won't, it, it won't work. One of us will get pumped. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can prepare the meal for you. I can even plate it for you. I can even put it on the fork for you. I could even put it in your mouth, but I can't make you chew it. Now, here is the thing. If you will at least chew it and swallow it, the omniscience within you will process for you the part that you need to bless you and the part that you need to release. But we all have a responsibility to be active in our increase, to be active in our expansion, to be active in our saving. Are you with me? Repeat after me. I have a responsibility. responsibility. We have a responsibility to work the understanding into a new habit, a new skill, and a new application. As our founder said, it works if you work it. That's right. That's right. So let, let me just let me just before we go too far, I wanna I wanna introduce you to this guy. Let me see let me see the fat man. And I feel I feel so we might have to consider uh, changing what we call him because as I as I mature, <laughs> I feel some kind of way about calling him. <laughs> like maybe we should call it the rotund man. I don't like I just don't know, but. We might have to rename him. When we look at the anatomy of Christ's universal temple, we inherited from Reverend Coleman the structure through which this ministry operates. So the ministry begins with God. The senior minister is a part of the head. The senior minister is supported by key leaders and We get the information out about the ministry in a number of different ways. We stand on principle and spiritual understanding, and our foundation is prayer and faith. But the largest part of the anatomy is what? Are you not able to read it? Can you see it? Then say it. Thank you. Thank uh, thank you. Like, Like, walk with me. So the largest part of the anatomy is the congregation, yes? Yes. Now, in that congregation, as I said just a little bit ago, are all different types of people. No two of us are the same. I just, I just, I was just talking to a brother in the back who, uh, who, who saw me grow up. He lived, he lived where I lived when I was, when I was 
when I was a knee high to a grasshopper. We grew up in the same place. And as I'm looking at him now, we're just a little different. He's taller than I am. He's cuter than I am. He dresses better than me. We, but we, like, we, we, have, we have similar stuff in our foundation, but he's different than I am. Are you with me? When it comes to the, the anatomy of the congregation, there are all different types of people in the room with all different types of learning styles. Some of us are auditory listeners or auditory learners. That means we hear the, we hear the music and we get our message from the music. You might find yourself in an experience when, when life starts to come apart at the scenes for you. You don't remember what you learned in class. You remember what you heard in the song. You might be predominantly an auditory learner. Are you with me? Some of us are visual learners. We need images and pictures in order to be relating to what is being presented. Are you with me? All different kinds of learning styles. Some of us are linguistic learners. That means you need for me or the person in your class to just talk to you. You are probably Bernadette, the kind of person who has copious notes. You're just a note taker. Right? Because as a linguistic learner, you're reinforcing your learning as you are taking notes. But you need to hear the person speaking to you. You need a lecture or a speech or someone talking. That's how you learn. Some of us learn through, through reading. I am a bibliophile. No, it's not what you think. <laughs> it means I love to read. Usually some of you like, I, I, I knew it. Them beady little eyes. No, no, no. It just means, means I love to read. I learn well by reading. You with me? Some of us are, are tactile learners. We learn by doing. It doesn't matter how much, uh, how much you hear me say. It doesn't matter who shows you. You don't understand it until you do it. But once you do it, Kim, you got it. Once you do it, Kim, you got it. There are different learning styles. And so it is my inclination to teach to the various learning styles. So in my approach to ministry and how God uses me, sometimes I'm going to touch this type of learner and sometimes I'm going to touch that type of learner. But in the 30 to 35 minutes, I'm trying to touch everybody. Are you with me? I'm also inclined to use creativity and illustration because it's a part of how I learned. See, I didn't learn politics from MSNBC. I learned politics from Schoolhouse Rock. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. That's how, that's, how, that's how I learned. My mom had me in school, and, and my, I know we were being taught grammar, but I learned grammar from, from Schoolhouse Rock. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. That's how, that's, that's how I learned. And so when you show up on a Sunday morning and you see an illustration, I just, I have to tap into the authentic expression of what is in my soul in order to be able to present it to you, right? I'm, I'm certain that in my, in, my, in my grammar school training, I learned numbers through rote, but I also learned from the count. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> Three. <laughs> you with me? And so, because God knows who he's using, he uses what's in the vessel to execute what's required in the role. Are you with me? Yeah. 
at the end of the day, we know we're all here for a purpose. And so when it comes to where we're going, we're going to make sure that we do our part or I'm going to make sure that I do my part. Institutionally, we'll make sure that we do our part to build you. Are you with me? Because here is what I believe. And I believe the, the history of this ministry has bore this out. You get built and then you attract somebody else. Are you with me? You get better and then you tell somebody else. Are you with me? So then we're, we're, as a part of the vision of this ministry, what it is we're doing, the mountain that we're climbing, it's the mountain of strengthening and renewing our commitment to be a teaching ministry so that we can teach you how to be better. The second aspect of the vision is rebuilding the institution, rebuilding the institution. Someone say rebuilding the institution. When we look at Nehemiah, as he is preparing to rebuild the wall, one of the things that Nehemiah does after he gets the report is he goes to Jerusalem. And once he gets to Jerusalem, he begins to inspect the wall to see um, like exactly what is the state of the wall. He then says to the people, somebody say, say to the people. He then says to the people, come, let us, somebody say us. Uh. Balcony believers, somebody say us. Uh. Somebody say us. Uh. Us. Don't get tired. All we, at, see, at this point, all we're doing is saying us. Don't, don't, like, don't let your energy wane at the us part. Right? See, this is not just excitement over me. This is excitement over us. So he says, come let us rebuild the wall. Right? It, 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 was, it was not the function of the leader, it was the function of the community to rebuild the wall. Yeah, yeah, no, that's like, that's, a, that's an excellent point for us to celebrate the responsibility of the community, right? Because it is us who will be responsible for building the wall. It is us who will make the decisions for adaptive change that give us the ability to be healthy so that we can rebuild. Are you with me? So as he is contemplating why rebuild the wall, right, because some things just don't need to be rebuilt. There's some relationships that you have that are broken down and that's just where they ought to stay. There are some mindsets that you have that you're disconnected from. You ought to stay disconnected from those. There are some behaviors that no longer suit you, no longer fit you. And so there is a breakdown in those things. Some things just ought to stay unbuilt. We've agreed that this ministry is necessary, important, and ought to be rebuilt. Am I right about it? So then as he is considering why rebuild it, the thing that occurs to him in his communication to the people is to rebuild it so that it is the greatest expression for what God can do through a body of people. Let me say it to you this way. If you go to the Sox game, well, maybe not the Sox. If you go to the Cubs game. Yeah. 
Uh, no, 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 that's not a point for Cubs fans to, to clap. I'm, like, I wasn't giving y'all that one. <laughs> South side of Rada, I just, it's, it, it's what it is. But if you go to a Cubs game, you'll see a stadium full of people who are excited about being entertained. Right? Whether that comes in the form of having a brew or looking at beautiful people or just taking in the game. When it comes to ministry and the opportunity for people to not only be entertained but transformed, there is sometimes a reluctance to go to get what you need. And so for us, there is value in people seeing the demonstration and the manifestation of what it looks like when the possibilities of God are expressed. Are you with me? One of the things that Nehemiah had to confront was that not everyone was in favor of rebuilding. Right, like that's just, like, like let's just face the facts and hold the truth. Not, every, not everyone is in favor of rebuilding. And so for him, there were some people who just like, like why, would you, why would you do that? Why would you even bother to rebuild the wall? Everybody's not going to be with you. So when we look at the ministry, and when we make a commitment to facing the facts and holding the truth, and when we look at the opportunity, um, dare I say the obligation, to rebuild the ministry, there is, there is value in, in inspecting where we are. Are you with me? If we were to look at the life cycle of a human being, and if we were to, if we were to consider the life cycle within the context of this ministry, what might we see? Let me see, this, let me see this life cycle graphic. Can you see that? So when we look at this bell curve and we look at the human life cycle, we see that it starts where? At birth and it wraps up at the transition, yes? And the peak of the curve is the young adult, yes? Face the facts, hold the truth. If we were to consider our core member, if we were to consider the legacy member of Christ Universal Temple, if we were con to consider the average person who is making a contribution week in and week out in the life of this ministry, we are likely to be on the, on the you, you tell me, I don't want to guess. Where, where? I'm hearing, I'm hearing middle. What else am I hearing? Mature and senior. No, listen. You can't lose with the stuff y'all use. You don't, when, it, when, it comes to, when it comes to us, you don't know. You, you, you see somebody who looks like they're in middle adult, they might be senior because we work our stuff. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? Face the facts, hold the truth. Within the context of the life cycle, we are likely on the, the, the receding side if we, if we just face the facts and hold the truth. Am I right about it? Just with what we're looking at here. Now we know about faith. This was done by faith. And if the best is yet to come, this is just a, a point of information. Are you with me? So now, if we also then look, if we, if we agree, do we agree that for us right now, as we face the facts and hold the truth, we, we skew toward middle adult, mature adult, senior adult? Yes? Now, if we look at the life cycle of a church, we see that if we were to overlay 
the middle, mature, and senior that would put, that would put an organization. You don't, no, let's not use C-U-T. Let's just use organization. Say organization. organization. If an organization had that same data, it would put that organization on the declining side. Yes or no? Yes. Space the facts. Hold the truth. So now, what that, what that helps us to see, if we face the facts and hold the truth, that there is some opportunity for adaptive change. Now, adaptive change is not technical change. Adaptive change is the responsibility we all take for recognizing that there are some things we must release, some things we might lose, some things that might have to go away in order for us to give ourselves an opportunity at new life. Are you with me? Let me know, let me know you're with me. I, I, like, I need to know you're with me. So now... When Reverend Coleman took us to, um, to took, a, took a, 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 a group of us to um, Saddleback Church, one of the things that, that Rick Warren uh, teaches is that the, he says there are two principles to remember when seeking to discern God's direction for the ministry. So these are two things that, that a leader has to consider. In order to facilitate growth, God uses the people that the minister can best reach. Now, reach is not an inside thing. Reach is an outside thing in this context. Are you with me? Are you with me? Reach is not an inside thing right now. We all, it's like we're already connected. Right? We're already a community. When it comes to our reach, it's who has a hearing for us. And so God uses those who can relate to the leader. Now, when Jesus began his ministry, scholars suggest that he was somewhere around late 20s when he started to call his disciples, these were a bunch of cats who were in their late teens, early 20s. So when you think about Peter, you think about Andrew, you think about John, you think about Matthew, when you think about the people he could reach, these were people who were in their teens as he's in his 20s. When we look at how it is we give ourselves an opportunity to renew in health, and we say that health is optimal functioning, yes? Don't get tired on me. Breathe. Breathe, take it in. This is, this is, this is good news. This is good news. Breathe. Because it's us who are responsible for rebuilding the wall. Are you with me? He said, the, Rick Warren said, the other thing that, that the leader, that God uses in the leader is he, the leader attracts who she or he is, not who they necessarily want. So without even trying, I think we could easily say that Johnny Coleman attracted folks she could reach. Yes. And she easily attracted folks who were like her. Yes? Let's go back to life cycle for a minute. Uh, human life cycle. So then, in order to rebuild the institution, what, what must we do? What can we do? Not must. What can we do? Somebody say can. can. Somebody say what can we do? What can we do? What can we, do? we can build on our strengths. That's one of the things we can do. We can build on our strengths. We are a phenomenal teaching ministry. Yes. 
certainly within the, within the new thought context, it's clear and evident to folks who observe what we produce that we are, uh, as Reverend McDowell likes to say, the Navy SEALs of new thought teaching. That's, that's, that this is what the world says about you and what you produce. Right? So we can, we can, we can strengthen up where we're strong. One of the second things I believe we have an opportunity to do is reinvent our congregation. Reinvent our congregation. What do I mean by reinvent our congregation? I mean begin to target, say target. target. Begin to target young adults who are 31 to 50. Begin to target them. Begin to go after them. Begin to create the space for them. Now, let's face the facts and hold the truth. When you reinvent yourself, there are certain things as, as many of us have, or let me, let me just deal with me. As someone who has fundamentally reinvented myself, there are some aspects of me that I've let go and I don't touch anymore. Right? Were we to take up the work of reinventing the congregation, it would require the same thing. Face the facts, hold the truth. Now, here is the challenge. That's one of the most difficult things to do in all of ministry. To, within a particular community context, begin to uh, target a demographic or a psychographic that is not necessarily consistent with the core. When, we, when, I, when, I, just, when I just sprinkle it in, just sprinkling it in causes disruption. Just with just with just a sprinkle, it causes disruption. Just a sprinkle. Some folks like no, nah, it's it's not the. I I I one of my, one of my best people. She like no, that's that's it's not church to me anymore. No no no, it's like everybody is entitled to their experience and their perspective. If we go back to the congregation, we're all different. So what makes up a person's perspective is, is, is not a point of judgment. Right? So, so if it does not feel or seem like church to someone, that's their experience. And that's just with a sprinkle. That's not with us being committed to targeting someone who fits the demographic or someone who fits the psychographic. So let me, let me when, when we went to Saddleback, oh, actually, I didn't go. I didn't go. We, it was just after POT, and I was already off work for a week, and I wasn't working at the church, and Reverend Coleman, don't, told, Reverend Coleman told me, don't quit my good job. So I had to go back to work. But what, but what I learned that we learned was that at Saddleback, they have, they have this... This, this guy they call Saddleback Sam. Can I tell you the characteristics of Christ Universal Tammy or Christ Universal Timmy? Can I tell you their characteristics? You sure? You already uncomfortable with the process? Can I talk to you? Okay. So if we target a Christ Universal Tammy or Christ Universal Timmy, they are in, they're ideally, they're in their late 30s to mid 40s. The people who I relate to, the people who have a hearing for me, the people who think like we think, the people who might be able to make the, the reach in being within the context of who we are as well as who we are becoming. They're in their mid 30s to early 40s. They are already aspirational. They want to have more, they want to do more, they want to give more. They believe that there is greatness in them, but they don't know how to unpack it. And so they are looking for you, 
But sometimes when they show up, they don't see enough of themselves, so it's, it's just tough to stick. Are you with me? They're probably a leader or an influencer in the space that they're in. I just tend to attract leaders and influencers. She or he doesn't necessarily consider themselves religious. They more than likely identify as spiritual. So they consider themselves spiritual. They are more than likely college educated. Not that, not that you can't get it wherever you are, but just C-U-T Tammy or C-U-T Timmy is likely to be college educated. Their attire in their professional environment has been relaxed. So when they come to church, they probably won't wear a suit and a tie. And in order for them to be able to connect, it helps for them to be able to see somebody who looks like them. Are you with me? They may be married or single. Whether they are married or not, intimacy and relationship is important to them. They likely have children. They live their lives in their screen, and so technology is a part of their life. They are likely to be overextended in both money and time. They've got tuition to pay back, student debt loan, mortgage or rent, car notes, not to mention the Joneses. So they're extended. And it could help to learn how to budget, but if you can't learn how to budget, it helps to know how to attract more abundance. <laughs> that's, that's the psychographics or the demographics of C-U-T Tammy or C-U-T Timmy. That's who, that's who he or she is. That's who would be inclined to say yes to me. They, I said they're, they're extended in their money. They're also extended in their time. They came of age in the era of multitasking. So they probably do a bunch of stuff. If they, if they don't have their children in youth athletics, they demand high-functioning youth programs so they can bring their children with them. That's C-U-T Tammy or C-U-T Timmy. When we look at, when we look at the, the function of certain types of leaders, see, it's different types of leaders are necessary for different points in the life cycle of a ministry. Let me see the, let me see the, uh, the organizational life cycle. Reverend Coleman, as the one who gave birth to this idea, was she had some, some certain skills and characteristics through which something that never existed could come into manifestation, right? Everybody can't do that. Everybody can't do it. Gary McIntosh calls that person a catalyzer. I'm not necessarily a catalyzer. He would classify me as a reorganizer. A reorganizer has the unique ability to connect an existing community to a new community and to uh, encourage the community to create a vision that can help move the community into the future. A reorganizer, according to Gary McIntosh, only about 5% of pastors in all churches fit the bill to be a reorganizer because it's not for the faint of heart. You've got to be willing to stay connected to people when they don't like that you move the chair. 
You got to be willing to keep your heart connected. When they don't like that, you move the piano. You've got, you've got, uh, it takes, it takes a special, and I'm not, I like it, this, I guess this is kind of a humble, humble brag, but it takes a certain type to be a reorganizer because the disruption upsets the community. But if the legacy member is ready to rock with you, you can rebuild the wall. <clears throat> now let's let's go to the last to the last component of of the vision for the ministry where where it is we're going we, we have to be willing to expand the reach of this better living message see by show of hands if you're better because this ministry uh, touched your life right that's that's a that's a, look 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 like just look around for a second That good news has to be spread. Let me, let, me just, let me just share a few things with you. Do you remember Doris and Don Kyle, the new members who drove up from Texas? Doris and Don went back to Texas, and Don prepared, Don is a gourmet chef. Don prepared a meal for their family and friends, invited them to, uh, to the house, put the live stream on in the family room, the dining room, the living room, and the kitchen. And as we were having church in Texas, they were having church. When we went, got up to do Reach Out and Touch, folks started moving from room to room to do Reach Out and Touch. When we stood up to do the Lord's Prayer, everybody in the house stood up to do the Lord's Prayer. Now, if Don and Doris can open their home up, surely you can open up your passenger seat in your car. If Don and Doris can prepare a whole meal, surely you can just invite somebody to come get some spiritual sustenance. And be willing to not just invite them, I wanna challenge you to bring them. Nothing says I want you to be a part of what I'm a part, like hey, let me come pick you up so I can bring you. Are you with me? Right now, just, just a few things that are happening as we are spreading the ministry. And, and I can't touch them all. There are lots of them. Uh, but right now, I'm, I'm in conversation with the gentleman named Emmanuel. Emmanuel, last name, his last name escapes me. Emmanuel is in Nigeria. Emmanuel is desiring to start a CUT type ministry because he has seen us on the stream. Emmanuel wants to start a, a, a CUT type ministry in Nigeria and he wants us to be a parent for him. Um, Reverend McDowell for, for the past four years supported the Bodhi spiritual community speaking there. He also on occasion would go to the 34th ward and speak there. Reverend Cook got a call asking us to send our ministers, our staff ministers, to other churches so that our staff ministers, your staff ministers, are in other churches, in other cities, giving pastoral leadership to those places. Mm -hmm. Spreading the reach of our better living message. So Reverend, Reverend Henrietta, Reverend Rosemary, this is, this is the work. Rep. Michael Collier, who is actually with, um, on the west side. Reverend Fred Randall, through the work he has been doing through Healthy Concepts for years, spreading the reach of our better living message. Reverend Dr. Reverend Dr. Johnson and the work he's been doing at Southwood Recovery Center, touching men who are uh, getting their lives back on track, spreading the reach of our better living message. Pam Frazier and the women in recovery at In the Spirit uh, doing fantastic work touching the lives of women. Reverend Jackie with Goal Rush, helping women come to understand the value within them. Reverend Rod and the Empowerment Center, touching lives all over the city, all over the world. Reverend Shirley and Meditative Life and the work that she is doing to help people come to understand their spiritual base. Uh, the Freedom Ministry just in Cook County Jail yesterday, up on the tier, talking to men. Men like, listen, when you come, please let them know I need to be with you whenever you come. 
Kelly Fair, Polish Pebbles, and the work that she's doing touching young ladies before they have an opportunity to lose who they are. And you don't have to call it C-U-T. See, the fruit doesn't have to bear the name of the tree in order to be the fruit of the tree. And so it's the work of spreading the good news. But the best ambassador for this ministry is you. The people in your circle. Gloria Goldsmith, there was a young lady, there was a young lady who joined, who joined uh, last, last, at the last baptism. She's a product of Gloria Goldsmith, sharing the word. She fits who we ought to target. So wherever you find yourself, when you're out, if there is something good happening in your life because of this ministry, don't keep it a secret. I was, I was, I'm, I'm gonna close with this. I'm gonna give me some, give me some, it's time to close music. I was talking with, um, I won't name drop, I'll just call him a celebrity. I was talking with a celebrity not long ago. And the person said to me, when I met Reverend Coleman, I had, I'd done a little work for her before. And we were having a conversation. And she said, Reverend Coleman said, you know, you can come to CUT too. Person was, was uh, I believe, in, in uh, Catholic church. She said, you can come too. It, it, there's room for you too. And so the, the founder, like, because I've always had this misconception that, that, that we don't tell people. We were, at one point in time, we were always telling people. I can't tell you the number of people I've heard say, I heard about that ministry from somebody. So I need you, I need us to one, just determine whether or not we're good with the adaptive change of beginning to target who we go after. And don't let my presence deceive you whatsoever. The overwhelming majority of the activity and resources that are moved in this ministry are geared toward our core member. Don't let anybody tell you that it's young focused or that like that's just that's just not the case. Our core member is who most of our time, energy, effort and resources go to. That's just the fact. That's just the fact. Most of our group's core member. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, somebody say and. And, and we have to change our target. You hit what you shoot at. But if you don't shoot at it, there's no chance of hitting it. And so if health is an important part of this ministry, if a future is a critical part of this ministry, if making sure that generations for the next century have an opportunity to be transformed by this ministry, those things are important. So like Nehemiah, I'm just going to say to you, let us rebuild the wall. 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 Let us. Let us. Let us. Let us rebuild the wall. 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 Let us rebuild the wall.